So we've set the stage for classical Greece. We've got your independent city-states. You've got Athens, which is the democracy. You've got Sparta. Now today we'll move the story forward with uh, just a little bit of government and a couple wars. The first item is the Persian Wars. And one thing that I, I would just like you to understand, and it's the reason why I'm showing you this map, is Greece is over here. So the independent Greek city-states are in this area right here. And the area in the yellow is the Persian Empire. So obviously the Persian Empire is gigantic, and even if you put all the Greek city-states together, they're very, very, very small compared to the Persian Empire. There's going to be a conflict between these, these two units, and the outcome might not be what you expect. The wars are going to begin when some Ionian Greek cities in Anatolia are going to revolt against the Persian Empire. Uh, I used a lot of geography words you might not know there, so I want to show you what I mean. What I mean is, remember we talked about the Greeks went out and they colonized all sorts of areas, so there were lots of Greek cities, cities that spoke Greek, had the same language, you know, they're your cousins, uh, would be all over this area. Well, some of those cities are in this area here. This is, you'd call this Ionia, you could call it Anatolia as well. These Greek city-states were conquered by the Persian Empire. So these Greek city-states, it's the one, they're the ones in the green, they are Greek city-states, the people there speak Greek, they're related to these people over here, and they revolt against the Persian Empire. They say, you know, we want our freedom, and they revolt against the Persian Empire. These guys help them in their revolt, but the revolt fails. Persia is furious that this little, you know, pipsqueak Athenian city-states tried to, you know, mess with their empire, so they go ahead and invade Greece. They send this big army to invade Greece, and the, the first time, sort of the first war, they fail. There's this battle at Marathon, and the Greeks surprisingly win. So that works for a while, but then the Persian king Darius, he dies, and his son Xerxes becomes the king. And Xerxes remembers that the Greeks beat his father, and so he wants to go conquer him. Xerxes is like the bad guy from the movie 300, so you've probably seen him before. He comes in, he tries to conquer Greece, but he also is defeated. And again, this is this big surprise because Persia as an empire is so huge and the Persian armies, the Persian fleets in these battles are so much bigger than the Greek armies that it seems like the, the Persians ought to win, but the Athenian you know, soldiers are, are highly motivated, the Persian soldiers perhaps less so. And the Athenians also have the most advanced fighting ship, the Trireme. Here are some images of it here. It had this deadly bronze ram, and they did paint you know, eyes on the front of it. So they, the, they would take these ships, and they would ram the Persian ships, and then back up, and then the, the Persian ships would sink. The lesson that I would say that should be drawn from this is it's not necessarily raw numbers that wins you... The battle, whether it's in you know it's in war or any other competition, sometimes having the best technology can make up for a smaller size. So in the aftermath of Greece winning this war, uh, we enter into something that we call the Age of Pericles. This is an age when Athens becomes pretty dominant in Greece. They're led by this general named. Pericles. Now, Athens is a democracy. They, they elect their generals, and Pericles is the most important political leader of this time. Unlike our time, leaders had to be elected every year. Pericles is elected and re-elected every year for more than 30 years. So he is this dominant figure. He's, you know, by all accounts, you know, very wise. And he leads Athens to this golden age where they're very rich, they're very prosperous, and he builds the Parthenon. Athens had been burned at one point during the, the Persian Wars before Greece had won. And so Pericles uses this opportunity of, of having a lot of Athens in ruins to rebuild it. And he has all these great big building projects. One of them is the Parthenon, the very famous building, he, he builds that. It's this temple to Athena that's right on the top of the Acropolis. So while Athens is enjoying this golden age, I'd like to take the opportunity to just, again, reiterate what their democracy was like and how it was different than ours. They had what's called a direct democracy. That is to say, a form of government 
in which the people participate directly in governmental decisions. Here's your map of Athens again. The assembly, which was their government, uh, government body, would meet on this hill right here. This hill in Athens. The assembly would go. They'd meet there. Be thousands of people. And, again, every citizen had the right to get up and argue for what they wanted and cast a vote for really important decisions. Like, important decisions like... Should we go to war? Where should we go to war? Who should lead the armies? Literally, like, what island should we send the army to? Like, a regular person could have a, a say in what direction the army would head. They also had a say in this, which is one of the more unusual Athenian practices and, and, and one that we should just take a little bit of note of. This is how powerful their democracy was. On the one hand, it was really great. They allowed people to vote. You know, in Persia, people can't vote. It's just whatever the, whatever the ruler says. But here's the, the level at which they were allowed to do stuff. They would and could ostracize people. It was this very particular practice where the, uh, a person could be nominated, and if that person received 6,000 votes that person was exiled from the city and they had to leave for 10 years. They couldn't return for 10 years. You literally could kick people out of the city if you could just get 6,000 people to vote them out of the city. The practice was supposed to be a uh, check on powerful politicians. Like if a politician got too powerful, too greedy, too evil, and, and, and everyone feared, oh no, he's going to try and overthrow the democracy, then a band of people could get together and kick that one person out. And this this right here is a is a little picture of someone who's who's been ostracized, right? This guy's been voted out of the city and his family's saying, no, 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 don't go. And he says, don't worry, I'll be back in 10 years. Let's move on to our last war, and this is going to be the beginning of the end for the age of the Greek city-states. So, Athens is very dominant at this time. Athens is, is spectacularly rich. Athens is, you know, sort of where all the cultured people go. It's, you know, the sort of New York City slash Los Angeles of its time. And they remember the Persian Wars. They remember, you know, how, how scary it was to have this big old empire coming in and invading and trying to pick the cities off one by one. So... Athens forms what's called the Delian League, and that is a defensive alliance. Easy, easy way to remember it, right? The, basically the way it works. If any city-state is attacked, they all have to come defend it. So it's just a, you know, an agreement between you, know, you and your buddies. Hey, if, if any one of us gets you know, uh, uh, hit with a pie in the face at lunchtime, then we will all retaliate against the, the pie thrower, and we'll all throw our stuff in their face. So it's a league that's dominated by Athens. Athens is sort of in charge of it. Sparta is unhappy with that because Sparta wants to be the big boss. So Sparta starts their own alliance called the Peloponnesian League. This is a real dangerous situation now because now Sparta has their group of allies. Athens has their group of allies. And here's a map of it right here. Sparta and its allies are in the blue. Athens and its allies are in the green. Now you have a situation where... If any of the blue cities are attacked, all the blue cities are supposed to come defend it. If any of the green cities are attacked, all the green cities are supposed to come defend it. So if any two of those cities of different colors start to have a fight with one another, then you have all of Greece involved in a war. And that is exactly what happens. The Delian League and the Peloponnesian Leagues go to war with each other in 431 BCE. Uh, they go to war for decades and decades and decades. It lasts till 404. Remember, we're in the BCs here, so time sort of ticks down. So the war lasts a really long time. It devastates Greece. You know, cities are burned. It's this awful, terrible thing. Two specific things cause Athens to lose. Athens loses, Sparta wins this war, and two of the big reasons for it are, number one, there's this uh, terrible military failure in Sicily, partially because Athens, the people, vote to send the expedition to Sicily. Some of the generals wanted to send it somewhere else, but they're, they're a democracy, the people get to vote, the people get to decide where the army goes, and the people, in this case, made a, a strategically wrong decision. And then, in addition to that, there's also this uh, horrible plague that hits Athens. So those two things together, along with uh, numerous other, other factors, causes Athens to lose the war. Sparta wins the war. But even after that, Sparta, Sparta is greatly weakened after they take out Athens. So they take out Athens, they win. Athens still exists, but it's not as strong as it was. But even Sparta isn't as strong as it was because it's been weakened by decades of war. So... 
the city-states limp along for a little while longer, but none of them are as powerful as they used to be, and none of them have been paying attention to a growing power up here in the north called Macedonia. So they've been wailing on each other for so long that even after the war is done, they are all weak, and the door is now open for uh, power up here in the north, Macedonia, to come in, crush them all, and, and unify the area and end the independence of the Greek city-states, and that is what will happen. An attacker will come in here from the north, and these guys, they'll still exist, but they'll all be under the thumb of a ruler from up here, who we'll discuss a different day.